So in this video, what we're going to take a quick look at is the form dialogue capability that was just added to Composer. Now this feature is in preview mode at the minute, so we do have to opt into that. And we can do that by clicking in the bottom left here and clicking on the cog. If we scroll down a little bit here, we can see that we have some preview features. And the first item that we have to check is the form dialogues option. We'll check that. And when that's done, we can see over at the left hand side that we have a new menu option available to us. And this basically gives us access to the form dialogues capability. Next, we'll take a look at the designer canvas for our chatbot. Here, we've just got a regular chatbot that sees if we have any people that have joined the conversation and, if they, and when they do so, they are sent a welcome message. So there's nothing really fancy going on there. But what we want to do is to use the new form dialogue to automatically generate a new collection of dialogues in a few mouse clicks. Now, historically, or typically what you have to do when you're building a chatbot in Composer is to create one or many dialogues to serve that conversational experience. But with form dialogues, what you can do is supply the data types and the properties that you want to capture, and the form dialogue capability will automatically generate the dialogues that can serve your conversation or can be served in your conversation. So we'll click on this item here and we'll see that the schemas are empty. So what we have to do is we have to create a schema that can then be served in our conversation. So we'll do that by clicking on the add sign. And so our example will take a coffee order. So we'll call this schema coffee order and we'll click on create. So we've got our schema, but we still haven't set any of the properties that our schema should handle. So the next thing that we have to do is to add the properties that we want our schema to handle. And these properties are basically the, the variables that will be captured in our conversation. So we can do that by clicking on the property type here. So we give our property a name and we can see um, coffee type. So that will be the type of coffee that our person wants. And we'll just make that a list and we could say something like um, Latte. Uh, we could say Mocha. Um, that'll do it in a minute. Uh, over to the right hand side, we can also see that we've got this property type being set to required. And this is the first item that will be asked for in the conversation. And that's controlled via the priority flag or value. So we'll go through and we'll add some more properties that we want our conversation to capture. We'll see number of shots. Uh, we'll see that is a number. We'll see a minimum of one and we don't want people to have too many shots. So we'll just see a maximum of five. We'll add another property and we'll just see um, special requests. Now special requests, we'll just make that freeform text. So that will be any string. Now, I would like to shuffle the order of this property. So I'll move that down a bit here. And I will move the coffee type back up here. So at this point, we've got a coffee order schema that will handle three property types, um, uh, three properties. So we've got coffee type, number of shots, and special requests. With the schema set up and the properties defined, the next thing that we have to do is to generate dialogue. But before we do that, we can also take a quick look at the code. So if we click on show code, we can see that the schema here is just some simple JSON. And if you've been using Composer for any number of weeks or months, you'll be familiar with that. So we we'll click on generate a dialogue and under the hood, Composer is going to generate all the required assets that are needed to then serve this information in a conversation. So that will include the language generation files, the language understanding files for the Lewis application and the actual dialogues themselves. So the dialogue generation has been successful. So we can click on view a dialogue and what we will see here is over to the left hand side, we now have a new dialogue in our project window. And it's got a different icon from a regular dialogue. It looks like a little grid. And underneath there, we've got all of the different variables that we've just set up. So I'll just contract those 
and we can see we've got coffee type, number of shots, special requests, and form wide operations. And we'll have a quick look at these. So these are the global events or variables that are available to our coffee order schema. We've got special requests. These are the, the triggers that are available for this particular variable. So we'll get missing, help, clear, and show. We've got some others, and it's the same for the number of shots, and it's the same for the coffee type. Now we do have a little bit of an error up here, so if we click on that, we'll see that we have to supply a Lewis key and a region. Now before, you never really used to get that much help when diagnosing problems like this, so this has created a, a nice little thing, I think, that just helps you diagnose an issue quicker. So the next thing that we'll do is um, we'll set up the Lewis application and then we'll jump back into Composer when that's done. So we'll click in the link fix in bot settings and we can see here that we have to supply our Lewis authoring key and the region. So I'll do that just now. So with the authoring key and region supplied, we can jump back into the designer canvas and the error has gone away. So at this point, we have created a schema for the coffee order. The next thing that we have to do is simply call this dialogue and we can do that by adding a new trigger uh, in our greeting event and calling begin new dialogue. Over to the right hand side, just as normal, we pick off our dialogue, but this time we will pick off coffee order. And we can see down here that that will be the new dialogue that will get invoked after the greeting is sent. So at this point we've got everything in place, we've created the schema, we've asked or we've set up the questions that we want our bot to ha be able to handle, whether it be coffee type, the number of shots or any special requests. The next thing that we have to do is simply start this bot. So we'll do that by clicking on start bot. And while that's going on, Composer will take all the assets that were generated as part of the designer canvas. It's going to condense the, the coffee order schema and the respective dialogues that that outputs. We will then be able to interact with this chatbot after we get a greeting. It will then start to ask us questions about coffee order. So now that our chatbot is running, the next thing that we can do is click on test and emulator. So we'll do that just now. And the emulator will spin up and connect to our chatbot. So here we get our welcome message. Oh, it's open twice, so we'll close that. We'll just put that there. So we can see we've got our welcome message. And then we've also got some other dialogues. And it's telling us here that the required properties for this conversation are coffee type, number of shots, and any special requests. We've also got some guides in and around the commands that we can issue in this conversation. So whether it be add, remove, clear, show, change, or ask for help. Now, that's all fine and well, but the really cool part is that we can see here that our chatbot has asked us, what value do you want to supply for the coffee type? Now, in the past, what you would have had to have done would have been to create a, an activity to capture that information and then key in the, the copy and then take that copy and take the input from the user and then throw that into a variable. With form dialog, you don't have to do that. It's going to handle all of that for you. So we'll say here, uh, what value do you want for coffee type? We will say, I would like a latte. Now, the other part is, is that you normally would have to build a language model, whether it be up in Lewis, which is the uh, the language understanding service, or any other one for that matter. But you would have to, we would have had to have trained our chatbot with a language model that can identify a particular intent based on any number of utterances all of that's been handled by the form dialog. Under the hood, what's happened is when it's been uh, compiled and connected to the Lewis portal via the authoring key, when we've built this coffee order dialog, the language model has also been created at runtime. Another uh, really good time saver. So I'll say I would like a latte. It's gonna say how many shots would you like? Again, the same thing's happening here. So there's some data type validation going on. And again, it's identifying the intent and um, no special requests. Now, we've got to the end of the conversation and we've been served an adaptive card and it's identified the coffee type, the number of shots and any special requests. 
is there any other property that you want to change? We can just say no. And we have cycled through the conversation. So we'll try another conversation and it's going to ask us here, what do you want for coffee type? So this time we'll try and trip up a little bit and we'll say something like, I would like a latte with four shots, please. So here we've supplied two data points. We've supplied latte and four shots. We can see we've got an output that said, okay, I'm gonna set the number of shots to four. We've already captured two pieces of information. And so we've got to the final piece of information, which is enter a string for special requests. Uh, we'll just say we'd like a cake. Now we've got to the end of the conversation again, and but this time we've accessed the conversation in a different way. We haven't keyed in all of the properties, but we've got to the to the final destination, if you will. So we've got the coffee type, the number of shots, and any special requests. So that was a quick run through of form dialogues. It's in preview at the minute, and it's available in Composer, and you can get that from the respective GitHub repo. I will have a blog post covering this at the weekend. If you get any questions, then hit me up on Twitter or contact me on my blog. Thank you.